please forgive the change in scenery. There's nothing wrong with my normal corner. I just don't really feel like being in it right now, nor do I feel like addressing within myself why that might be. Okay, let's get into it. Many YouTubers have made videos addressing this topic in the past. I think I've even made a video about it at one point, but it keeps happening, so here we are, still addressing it again. Making content like this, you have to walk a fine line. Several of them, actually. Many of which I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to navigate, uh, but there's one in particular I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is the line between being respectful and not allowing social niceties to overshadow the very real harm caused by extremism, cult mindsets, and even seemingly harmless religions. Sometimes people are just angry. They feel like they've been tricked or betrayed. They want the whole world to see how ridiculous these religious beliefs are. This is often called the angry atheist phase. It's referred to as a phase because most people move past this at some point and into a mindset that's more productive for day-to-day -day life. If you're in the angry atheist phase right now, it might feel like this is just where you've landed, where you're going to be. That's how it felt for me. I just thought that this was how life was going to be from now on. That may very well be the case, actually. Some people just stay angry and you have plenty of reason to be angry. If that never stops, if you never stop just being angry, that's reasonable. I don't think that's what's most likely to happen, but I think it's reasonable. I didn't sit down to make a video to tell you to stop being angry. What I'm worried about is what you do with that anger or what you do while you're angry. Sometimes it can be really easy to confuse a reasonable reaction to an unreasonable claim with being just a bit spiteful in a malicious and potentially harmful way. I recently came across a great example of this that I really wish I had screenshotted. Just gonna have to go off of memory here. Someone had tweeted a meme or something and someone in the replies had posted a screenshot of a conversation, like a text conversation. It didn't have like a caption with it or anything. It was just the screenshot of the text conversation. In it, there was a local pastor reaching out to the person who posted, inviting them to church. And the person who posted responded with something along the lines of, God's not real, grow up. There was some more to the conversation. I think there were four total texts between the two of them and the pastor agreeing to pray for the person or something. I guess not agreeing to, offering to, saying they were going to, whatever. Anyway, both the text messages sent by the poster were as condescending and disrespectful and rude as that first one. And to add insult to injury, the screenshot included the pastor's phone number. Let's look at this from a few different angles. First of all, is God real? Probably not. Is the Christian God real? Definitely not. That poster and I can agree on that at least. The first area where I think they went really wrong is implying that holding a God belief is childish, like an imaginary friend. There's a lot of complexity to why people believe what they do in regards to their religious beliefs. It's a lot more complex than just an imaginary friend or a crutch that you lean on to get through your day-to-day -day life. Can God be a crutch? Yes, absolutely. But there's so much more to it than that. Addressing the subject this way as just childish, telling the person that they need to grow up is disrespectful. The pastor is still a human being who deserves the same baseline level of respect as any other person. And so far, all you know about them is that they're a pastor. You don't know if they're one of the worst kinds, fire and brimstone, homophobic, women belong in the kitchen kind of pastors, or one of those super chill, God is love, let's hold hands around a campfire and talk about that kind of pastors. I think that there's harm in both, but the two are not to be equated. There's definitely a lesser of two evils there. Still, both are doing basically the best that they can with what life has given them. Even the horrible fire and brimstone worst kind of preacher is still a human being. Another angle, what can be accomplished by a conversation like that? They might be able to get some frustration out and that's not nothing but a big old side effect of that is playing into a stereotype that atheists already struggle with a lot. The stereotype being that atheists are just angry, hateful people, not someone you want to be around or associated with, and certainly not someone you want to be identified as. That kind of mindset could push someone who's questioning their religion back into it just so that they don't have to be identified as one of these cringy, horrible, angry atheists. Look at what just happened with Telltale and his daughter. For those of you who might not know what happened, uh, Telltale is a YouTuber, an atheist YouTuber, 
much bigger following than mine and he's a father. His daughter's health teacher was violating separation of church and state, preaching to the students and the kid recorded it because she's a badass who wanted to fight. If you look at the Bible, it says sex isn't for love, it is for what? When is the time you should? After marriage. After marriage. So many kids that so against me in my first and second period, you would have a heart attack. When the child brought the recording home to her dad, he was very angry, did what any reasonable parent would in this kind of a situation, reached out to FFRF. The town was not happy. The family was basically run out of town. For their own safety, they had to just up and leave. A Facebook page dedicated to doxing and stalking the family had been put up with like almost half of the members of the town. Well, the numbers were consistent with about half of the members of the town. There was mention that people were protesting at the kid's bus stop. Grown adults were harassing this 12 year old. And this is the reality of the world we live in because they're able to justify their behaviors by villainizing those who they victimize. To them, Owen Telltale is this evil monster who's brainwashed his child into believing these awful, horrible things. And while the child might not be at fault, she's still a danger for their kids to be around. This is the most extreme example I've heard of recently in the US. Or maybe it's just the closest to home because it's like acquaintances, friends of friends, and I'm friends with the kid's stepmom. I don't know but it's definitely a very extreme example. What I'm getting at is that I don't want atheists to become like these extremists justifying horrible, harmful, hateful behavior towards people with good intentions because these people are causing harm, whether you just believe it or you can fully demonstrate that what they're doing is harmful. We can demonstrate that these kinds of people are causing harm and we absolutely should call it out. The question then becomes what to do with it next. Think about what you're doing and saying. What goal is going to be accomplished by what you're doing? Good kitty. Is it gonna point out legitimate flaws and be potentially seen by the right person at the right time and help them with their deconversion? Or if the same person sees it, is it just gonna further their belief that atheists are these cringy, crappy, awful people that they don't wanna be associated with and thus push them further back into their religion so that they don't have to be associated with us. We should also be thinking about within ourselves why it is we want to do or say whatever it is that we want to do or say. Basically, not just what will this accomplish, but what are you hoping it will accomplish? Is it spite? Legitimate interest in conversation, just trying to start a dialogue or a debate maybe? You don't have to have some super deep reasoning behind everything you do. We can have fun and laugh at some silly ideas. We do that a lot on this channel. Make jokes as we deconstruct these awful ideas, but what we wanna to try to make sure we're not doing is hurting the causes that are being fought for by so many great people like Genetically Modified Skeptic, Telltale, Prophet of Zod, Shannon Q, Vice Rhino, Apologia, and so many other wonderful atheist YouTubers who are doing so much good in this world. The people we're talking to and about are still human beings. They might be wrong, they might be so dramatically wrong that they're causing harm to themselves and others, but ultimately they're still people. People who deserve to be respected like anyone else. We can talk about what's helpful and harmful. We can and should have that discussion, but first, let's make sure our intentions are in the right place. Or at the very least, try to make sure that we're not causing as much harm as Christianity. A bit of a shorter video and might be a little bit jumbled. My life is a mess right now, so my head is a mess, but hopefully this makes enough sense and gets my point across. Regardless, thank you all so much for watching. Extra special thank you to my patrons who are listed, yeah, right here, right by my bunny. Extra, extra special thank you to my top tier spooky bitch patron, Erin. If you would like to become a patron or maybe a top tier spooky bitch patron, then the link to my Patreon is in the description below with all my other social medias, ways to support the channel, all that. Make sure you like, comment, and definitely subscribe. And as always, stay unholy, my friends.